Jen from the Chronicles of Home, and we're in my basement today where I'm in the process of installing new laminate flooring from Lumber Liquidators. And as you probably know, basements tend to be on the damp side, which makes them not great for hardwood floor. Laminate is perfect for a basement, and specifically you want to look for a laminate that is appropriate for below grade installation. The great news is once you choose your laminate, it's so easy to install. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, first things first, you need to gather up your materials. So here is a list of everything you're gonna need. You will need a vapor barrier to protect your flooring from any moisture that comes up from your concrete basement floor. You're going to need packing tape, and that is to seal the seams in the vapor barrier as you put it down. Um, if your laminate flooring does not come with an attached pad underneath, you will need a pad underneath the flooring. You'll need the flooring itself, and I am working with a natural acacia flooring from Lumber Liquidators. You're going to need a tape measure and a pencil. You need a miter saw to make cuts for the edge pieces of the wood. Um, you need a rubber mallet to help tap the boards into place. And you're also going to need a jigsaw or a Sonicrafter multi-tool, something that you can use to cut bits of baseboard or around um, poles and other objects in the basement that might need something other than the straight cut you can get with the mega saw. All right, so I'm showing you this corner of the room here because you can see the three layers that go down. This here, the green layer is my vapor barrier, and it's just really thick plastic. Um, and it comes in a large roll, so you roll it out, and then you go back to the beginning and start a second row, and that's where you use your packing tape to seal the edges, and you'll just want to overlap the edges of the vapor barrier a bit to make sure that no moisture can get through. This red layer here is my pad, which goes down on top of the vapor barrier. And this one I have has an extra layer of antimicrobial protection, which I just liked for a basement since it tends to be damp. And this pad came with adhesive edges, so I didn't have to worry about sealing those edges with packing tape. It already came with an adhesive edge. Once you have your vapor barrier and your pad down, you're ready to put your flooring on top, and I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So I grabbed a piece of scrap laminate here to show you that there is a tongue side to the laminate, and there is a groove side to the laminate. When you start laying your first board, you want to make sure that the tongue side is up against the wall, and the groove side is facing out toward you. As you can see here, I opted to remove the baseboard before I started my flooring. My baseboard was a bit damaged, and I felt like it was the best move to just remove it. You don't have to do this. Either way, whether your baseboard's there or whether it's not, you need to make sure that you leave at the edges a quarter inch to a three eighth of an inch of space to allow for swelling or expansion when the weather's warmer. I just cut some little scrap pieces of wood here to act as my spacers. So when you're ready to let your first board, this is my first board here, the tongue side's facing the wall, and I set up a spacer at the edge and along the side to make sure that I left that quarter inch to three eighth inch of space. All right, I wanted to give you a closer look at how you actually get the flooring to go together. So if you start, like I said, the tongue side facing the wall, uh, I was working right to left. You don't have to do that. You can work left to right as well. But um, I've got groove side facing me now. My new board going in has the tongue side facing the board adjacent to it. And this board here on the right has the tongue side facing out and this end has a groove side. So the very first thing you do, kind of hold it up at about a 45 degree angle and slide it under, slide the tongue under the groove. And you want to make sure you push it right tight up against the board next to it. Grab your rubber mallet, give it a few taps, and then let go of it, and you're gonna see there's gonna be a little bit of a gap here most of the time. Take your rubber mallet again without touching it, tap it in more at a few spots. 
And what you're gonna see as you do that, this opening between the two boards is gonna go away. And as you snap that tongue into the groove, the board is gonna lay flat. You may have it sticking up just a little bit here at the joint. You can tap it flat with your mallet or when you go and get to your next row here, it's gonna hold that joint flat and in place. So don't worry too much about that. Have it pretty flat, but it doesn't have to be exact. So when you get to the end of your row, chances are your next board is not gonna fit exactly in that space. You're definitely gonna have to make some cuts to finish the ends of most of the rows. So I'm gonna measure the space between the wall and the end of my last board, and don't forget to leave about three-eighths of an inch of space over here. And also make sure that you cut the right end of your board. I made that mistake the first time. So since I'm laying my floor from right to left, I need to make sure that I the piece that I cut is from the right side of the next board so the tongue and groove will fit together. So make sure you pay attention to that. So once you've laid that last piece in your row, you're going to have a scrap piece left over from the cut, except it is not really scrap. You're going to want to hold on to this. As long as it's longer than 12 inches, you're going to start your next row with it. And that minimizes waste, and it also makes sure that the seams in your flooring are staggered. They're not all lined up, and that's the look that you want. So use the cut piece remaining, from the end of your last row, start your next row. And then just keep laying the flooring, tongue and groove. Okay, so once you have finished installing all of your boards, you're ready to finish this project up. And the way you do that is by either installing a new baseboard, like in my case, or if you do not remove your baseboard, you need to get some quarter round. And I didn't put a baseboard or quarter round in the materials list earlier in this video, because what you need is gonna depend on whether or not you remove First thing that you'll need to do then is remove your spacers that you have around the edge and then take either your baseboard or your quarter round and set it right on top of the floor, that edge floorboard. And if you're doing a new baseboard like I am, you're going to nail it right into the wall. If you're doing quarter round, you're going to put the quarter round right here at the bottom of your baseboard and nail that into the baseboard. And both of these finish the look but they also hold the boards in place all the way around the room. And once you've finished installing your baseboard or your quarter round, you are done and you get to enjoy your beautiful new laminate floor. So if in your basement you have a floor that needs replacing or you just don't like what's down there and you want to replace it with something else, I really would recommend laminate. It's such a great choice. And Lumber Liquidators has a huge selection of laminate flooring and hardwoods, but they have a really nice range of options for below grade installations like a basement. Uh, head to my blog if you are looking for more DIY or decorating inspiration. And thank you for joining me today. I hope this video was helpful to you if you are getting ready to install laminate flooring yourself.